when you read the script originally and saw this sort of retelling from a different angle of mm. the classic Sleeping Beauty story, yes. I mean, what was your impressions? What did you think? How do you think this would kind of come out cinematically? I thought I thought I was interested to see whether they could keep the emotional heart of the story as you begin this massive you know, $200 million filmmaking process, which to me inevitably means that you end up with a lot of focus on visual and not so much on on any sort of real emotion or performance. And that's always a challenge. And I think they've done it better than, than most. I really do. I think Rob, as the director, you know, the advantage he had was he was creating the whole visual world himself, coming from being a production designer. So the creatures, the, I mean, down to sometimes things like my costume, my, 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 my armor you know, is, is designed by the director. So um, that, I think, visually, uh, it, it was keeping the visual aspects of the film in really coming the vast majority from one guy and the director's mind, which doesn't usually happen on these things. Normally it's right. several, you know, different, and this guy's good with armor, so he designs that, and this guy designs the, the landscapes, and the this guy that designs... The has that visual effects background. And he has, yeah, it's not just visual, it's, it's, he's an artist. He right. has the production, he draws, this is how the pixie, this is what I want the pixie, this is this type of creature, this is, you know, how he looks. Um, and so that helps center it around him and not allow it to get too pulled apart. Um, and he sort of, try, you know, you, you get brought into his world rather than a big personality that's commanding an army, mm -hmm. a $200 million army. It's an artist who's trying to bring the $200 million elements into his, into his, his world. Well, for me, a character is going to be sympathetic and understandable if, if he's playing on things that are true in the human condition. So for me, you know, people would go, oh, Stefan's is a bad, evil man. It's like, again, he's not doing things that he thinks are bad and evil. He's, and for me, he's a caricature of male ambition. And it's a, a fairy tale or a story is there to do dramatic versions for me of things that are true in society. So would you, you know, sacrifice your true love for the ultimate power becoming king? Uh, most men would go, oh, I would never do that. But then there's plenty of them that, you know, don't spend the time with their families or their wives or whatever because their work is really that important. I think that's how you, that's how you keep it sympathetic in, in, in a, from a certain point of view. And then how much of the, I played it with as much humanity as I could on everything. And then they, they have to be very careful when they craft the film. You can't make him too sympathetic and too likable. He still has to be the villain for the sake of the moral of the story as this man never redeemed. To me, he loves Maleficent the whole way. You know, but his guilt and his his um, his conscience is is bugging him because of that, because he betrayed his true love, and it was not an easy thing. Working with Angelina Jolie, yeah, I mean, I can't imagine anyone else playing this mm. character, no, but her. I mean, no. she, in the best sense of the term, chews yeah. up the scenery, yeah, playing yeah. this role. Tell me yeah. about working with her and sort of her style. And I mean, I I was really, you know, when when I met her, she had mentioned that she would like to do something with me. This was like two years before. Oh. And, and, and I think she had seen District 9 and was very complimentary about that. And I think what we share as actors and the reason why there were very few actors that I, you know, sort of known actors that I felt impelled, like I really wanna work with this person. She has a very interesting energy in that she can go from being very soft and vulnerable to very strong. So she can have the very feminine, like, oh, I'm just a girl and I'm just sexy and lovely and protect me to like, I don't need you at all. You know? <laughs> and there's, there's very few people, um, very few women that have that range and even fewer that will attempt, you know, that are movie stars that are known for being beautiful and iconic and, and, and loved who will, you know, be prepared to say, I hate you to a baby in the film and, and, and feel confident enough to bring the audience back to liking them. Um, and I just love that she was brave enough to go and do that. And, and I knew she had the acting sort of chops to pull it off. When I read it, I was like, this is going to be really cool because I also relate to that. You know, I also relate to characters like with Vickers who they could do bad things, but then, you know, you still, the audience must still like him. Um, in this case, my guy just has to go one way um, as, a, as, as, a, as a supporting role. But I still felt like it would be an interesting combination of actors that both play a lot with those layers of strength and weakness and strength and vulnerability. Um, we sort of match each other in that way energetically. I think as, as performers on screen. Coming off of District 9, I think you've done a, a brilliant job of sort of navigating your career. I mean, and playing really interesting characters in interesting films. 
the A Team, mm, uh, although mm. obviously a big you know yeah. action blockbuster yeah, thing, yeah. but Old Boy, yeah. Elysium, yeah. and working with some really you know Liam Neeson yeah. and Matt Damon yeah. and Angelina Jolie, some amazing yeah. people. I mean, yeah. what have you learned from that process, and how do you choose? How have you navigated choosing projects? You know, it's it's a combination. I mean, the biggest thing is I'm not in a position where I have a lot of choice. You know, so so in in in, in the sense that the best material will always go to sort of the top names in the business. And there's very few, more and more you find like the really good writers are writing for television. That's the place where a good writer wants to be. He has control of his show. You know, good writers in film, it's like they, you write a great script, everybody changes it, the movie star comes on, they want this to happen, the studio wants this, the director wants this. So it's tough to find really great writing material in, in, in film and, and even tougher to then be able to get that stuff, you know, before a whole bunch of people ahead of you on the, on the queue, in the queue, uh, will, will get. So, um, but I, I always look for something that I think I, where I can make the character interesting and different and, um, uh, you know, just explore real aspects of human nature in an extreme way. I find that interesting. My, my next one with Chappie that I did with Neil in South Africa was a real relief for me. That was playing a sort of childlike robot. It's really a kid that grows up from birth till, you know, till he's emotionally about a nine or 10 year old. So that I got to be a child for, for, for three months, which after all of this heavy stuff with Kruger and with Maleficent, um, was was really was really refreshing, you know. Uh, last thing I'll just say is I was a huge fan of the A Team. Oh, cool, and, man! And growing up, and Murdoch was yeah. always my favorite character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I thought you were great doing that. I mean, were uh, you disappointed that it didn't work out to sort of do a? a I, I mean, I was in a way. I I feel that I feel that there was an enormous amount of potential for that film, and I feel for me as a fan, the potential was in seeing those guys get found by somebody in LA that needs their help like the TV show was. And I think unfortunately that's where we would have been in a sequel. I think the origin story for me as a fan was less interesting than just watching. I think we had an incredible chemistry, those, those characters between you know Liam and Bradley and, and Rampage and myself. Um, and it, it, it did feel frustrating that we never really got to do what the A team did, which was like just these four guys just trying to help this person, you know, without the government finding out, and just to, you know, and just let us just let us do our thing. So it was, it, I guess, yeah, I guess it's disappointing in that way, um, and I think that's what they would have done with with future films. Yeah. Well, we were great in that. You're great yeah. in this, and it's oh, always great cool talking man. to you, man. Really cool man. Thank it. you yeah, so much. So much. Yeah.